Today, I was grilled with hard questions by one of you during my own office hour number two. Questions like, do we pay terminated channel earnings? Why or why not? The Zed Rhino is a big one. And then some other partners talked about how when their channels were terminated for reasons that YouTube would still pay you, that you wouldn't pay their partners. Hear my reply later in this video. Then... Okay, that's actually a very good answer. I had no idea that companies were actually messaging you and being like, you know, we want the money that you received. That I didn't know that, so that, there we go. Why does Freedom partner with everyone was another hard question. I guess the perception from me was the fact that you were just trying to make every penny that could possibly come in. Do we value our business or our reputation more was another one. Would you say that you were more worried about the business side and the fact that using it as leverage in a negotiating tool than you were about the reputation of freedom? Do you also want to talk with me privately or publicly like this? Then fill out the Google form behind me. The link is down there in the description below. I use this to contact people for George Office Hours. We can talk about anything you like, but to give you some ideas, I wrote a letter from the CEO of Freedom and right now is being viewed by an anonymous bat. This gives you all the things Freedom does that you may not be aware of with links to each product and I encourage you to read it. The link is down there in the description below. Now let's talk to Avsterbone where he grills me with his questions. Roll it! Let's try calling Avsterbone. Hello. Hello, George. Oh, wow. This is... um. This is surreal. I'm speaking to George <laughs> Venus right now. We two can play at the uh, green screen game here. I think I'm going to one up the Elgato green screen. When I saw the video, I was like, there's no way. Like, I saw it only had 132 <laughs> views, and I filled up the form as fast as I could. First question for me is, is it OK to publish this video on The George Show, or do you want to keep this a private conversation? You, you may publish it. That would be that would be awesome. I actually have a, a, uh, some questions. Now, I, I will give you some heads up. They're not like easy ball questions. I went and did a little bit of research and I found out that there were other channels that were terminated. And, you know, I know you're not allowed to, you know, discuss specific cases, but bringing some up like the Zed Rhino is a big one. And then some other partners talked about how when their channels were terminated, for reasons that YouTube would still pay you, that you wouldn't pay their partners. If there was a question of who has the rights, we would withhold the payments so that we could pay their correct rights holder. We even got uh, letters earlier on in Freedom from big companies uh, that were demanding uh, payment, basically, for content that they felt was theirs, that we were monetizing through channels in our affiliate CMS. Okay, that's actually a very good answer. I had no idea that companies were actually messaging you and being like, you know, we want the money that you received. That I didn't know that, so that, there we go. I guess the perception from me was the fact that you were just trying to make every penny that could possibly come in. So how come back then, when there were no requirements set forth by YouTube, did you decide to basically take anyone who applied and let them into freedom? The spirit of freedom, the culture I wanted to create was a network that doesn't discriminate, that welcomes everybody. And your point of, well, doesn't that mean everybody gets less service? No, because our goal was always to staff up appropriately so that everyone still has uh, a fast response time. And the benefits are we can get better value for licensing. We can also encourage more people to collaborate. You have a larger pool of partners that you could connect with. Uh, we wanted people to introduce themselves on the forums. And again, there's a larger number of people, meaning there's more potential matches where you could find new friends, connect with strangers. Because what we found is people in different networks are less likely to work with each other. There seemed to be like this barrier, like I'm with Machinima, <laughs> I'm with Freedom, I'm with BBTV. And everyone kind of stuck to their own network. So we were hoping that, well, first of all, we didn't like that. And we would have preferred everyone just treated themselves as, well, we're all YouTubers. Like, who cares that if I'm in Machinima or I'm with Freedom? But there seems to, there is a psychology around like, this is my clan, this is my brotherhood, and I support my people. We wanted this to be the largest group of people that hopefully gave you more chances to meet new friends and collaborate. 
Would you say that you were more worried about the business side and the fact that using it as leverage and a negotiating tool than you were about the reputation of freedom? What was I thinking when I was promoting this fact? Of course, I was thinking more members means more chances for collaboration, more chances for uh, deals with other companies, helps everyone grow faster together. But you can't ever please everybody. You have to always think about the net positive, and I thought the net positive was more channels. Okay. Um, it's a great answer. Uh, I mean, per yeah, personally, like my all, my view of you was always is that um, I always felt in your in your videos, even back from like 2012, because that's like when I said I'm I'm 17 now, so to think that like this is five years in the making. Yeah, you were 12. Um, wow. I that was yeah. What, what time? I shouldn't even had a YouTube channel. Top of loss. <laughs> um, but um, no, like I guess my always my perception of you is is that I knew that you were a smart businessman, and I could tell in your videos that you were genuinely invested. But I think that people felt that you were so like I, I know that like people like I talk to felt that like you were just so blinded by the sheer amount of dollars that would come in with all of these people and everything, and you were trying to attract like the. the the largest common denominator, um, that it was almost like a deception thing. But at the same time, we all felt that you were genuinely enthusiastic about the network. Like you could just tell in the videos. I mean, like, yeah. you know, you just come off like, you're just like super passionate about freedom. Um, so I guess like, you know, the whole largest common denominator thing was really the only thing that was kind of skewing it. But obviously given your explanation, the fact that you use it as a negotiating tool, obviously you know, makes it sound a lot better. So I, I appreciate that. Um, my next question uh, before is... You, before you get to the next question, one other point on that with the money aspect is for us to do great things, we do need money to invest in people and projects. And a lot of the profits we made are now going into things like a, a game studio, a team that can make custom games for creators, a music factory, a composing team, a team of composers who can make custom music for creators. None of that would have been possible if we were not a profitable company. The problem now, of course, isn't that um, we offer more services. The problem is because YouTube had to unlink all of the channels that they did from all MCNs, not just ours, we're actually yeah. a lot less profitable than we were before. So we're now back in the stage of cutting back, finding ways to save money as we ramp up new revenue streams. So to that point that you were saying, oh, George is collecting all this money. It actually, none of it came to me. Like, I still, to this day, um, you know, don't collect a salary. I haven't for over a year. I did before because I did need money, but I'm at a stage <laughs> where I'd rather put the money that I could be getting back into the company to help reinvest in services that help people grow. Because I believe in my heart, as you said, very genuinely, that it's the people in freedom that will make us successful. And I want to make sure everyone has the best chance of success by redirecting as much money into tools and services that can help you grow. And if we ever get to a stage where we're like the biggest MCN, not just by channel count, but by many other things, views, subscribers, revenue, and we have you know a huge investment or we do an IPO, then I will take my fair share. But until then, my goal <laughs> is to take as little as I can and um, make sure everything gets reinvested into the company. The next question is, is that, so when uh, other uh, channels, uh, I know uh, Machinima, you know, I know their reputation was terrible back then, but one of the things that Machinima did really well, in my opinion, is they created some really awesome first party content. Uh, gaming Weekly, uh, things like that, and they had these two really great hosts, and I would watch just because it was like genuinely entertaining. Now that has now dissolved, and it is no longer there. But Freedom back then, and, and now, I mean, I know back then you had those two bald guys who reviewed videos. <laughs> then you had the Baldy Brothers. Um, that, the Baldy Brothers, yes. And then you had that uh, girl, that redhead who would do things. That was um, Impulse. Impulse. Impulse, impulse. And her name was oh. Tiffany. Tip <laughs> Dude, it's like throwback city right now. Yeah. And now you have KYC nullified. So yes. I think 
So I guess my question is, is that a lot of these shows, especially KYC, is literally verbatim rereading YouTube policies. Now, I have to admit, uh, I find KYC slightly... Uh, it's edited very well. KYC is edited very well, very professional. But to somebody like me, this is information that I already know. And I feel like that right. that's information to a lot of other people. And um, I feel like that a lot of people aren't super honest when they give feedback. Because you always ask for like feedback down in the comments yes. below, Freedom Family. <laughs> and um, I feel like that a lot of people, when they write comments, they don't want to be, be critical because they're hoping that they'll be noticed by you, right. get an extra view, get an extra comment, stuff like that. So rather than spending money and resources on people who will just reread comments, because the hosts are great. I just think that, you know, because if you look at your channel, like the Freedom MCN hub as a whole, and you look at the view count to sub count, and granted, I'll give you a pass because a lot of people subscribe just in the network and don't really care for the content. But I mean, you could look at Machinima and although they had way more, they have way more subscribers than Freedom, when they did do those shows, they were pulling in views just from people just genuinely interested in gaming. So yes. I guess my question is, is that instead of having uh, it focused so inward on freedom why not branch out into something broader like gaming news or something more interesting as that would not only bring in more eyeballs and, and more money for freedom but potentially new members so wh yeah. why would did you decide to do that it's a matter of people we would love to do shows about gaming news about uh, uh, the latest YouTube tips um, any kind of subject that as you just said would get new eyeballs uh, new audiences it's about the people um, impulse ended because the team uh, just didn't want to continue doing it and it became very expensive um, you know other shows that we had in the past like Baldy Brothers ended because we felt people were just losing interest like it was getting uh, less and less viewers and less and less comments uh, we are trying to listen to the feedback of everybody and improve the shows so that they stay fresh and interesting. So that's a great feedback you gave about don't just read the text for KYC, put in additional, like your own thoughts, your own insights that I don't know. Because right now for you, uh, everything on that show you just said, you know. So there's no point watching it. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, the challenge for us is just finding the people who'd be able to do good quality content um, for the hub. That's fair. Um, I, I think another thing that I thought was very, um, you know, I kind of questioned was is that, so I understand the angle, especially going back to the Baldy Brothers, and now you have the, the channel review. Um, what happened is, is that it, the whole point of the show was to review uh, YouTube channels and to promote yes. members within the Freedom community. But I think part of the problem with that is, is that it got to a point where it was so oversaturated, mm -hmm. where it would just be so many different channels. And the feedback that was given on the channels, in my opinion, was very generic. I mean, right. you would it would be a couple of checklist items. Do they have thumbnails, playlists? something in their about section and the only reason people watched those videos was not to find new people to subscribe to it was to see if they got featured in. yeah and i remember um it wasn't me who ran an experience but there was another youtuber called thaf9 who's, yeah, he's like twenty thousand subscribers okay. and he made uh, a video that basically went ahead and looked at uh the results of that and it showed that the sub gain was little to none it was it was negligible right. so and i mean you look at other channels and i mean although i guess you wouldn't say pewdiepie is a channel reviewer he's a meme reviewer but yeah. um other channels you know who will occasionally shout somebody out yeah it's more scarce and it's rare but at the same time the effect of that shout out it, it, it's, it leaps and bounds beyond so yes. I, why did you decide that oversaturate or my, i guess in my opinion oversaturation was a better play than to, you know, call somebody out here and there? Yeah, the answer to that is it was just limited options. Uh, we actually just don't have a lot of content to put on Freedom Central. So whatever we have, we just post. And your point of oversaturation and quality, I guess the question is, would you prefer that or no videos? <laughs> like right Fair now, enough. even myself, I haven't been producing content 
and I should be making much more than I currently am. Um, is it better to have long periods of no content and once in a while have a video that's more relevant or higher quality than if I just have, let's say, daily videos like I used to? Um, it's a balance because it, there's, there's pros for both cases, but I just prefer more content even if the quality is lower just because it gives you a habit, something to engage in, uh, comment, like meet other people in the YouTube comments. Um, and since I've started making less videos, there's actually a lot lower viewership, a lot lower comment count. So I do think more people prefer regular content, even if it's not as high quality, just so that they have a place to interact. That's good. I mean, I think one of the big pulls of freedom is the fact that the face of freedom is also the chief executive officer of freedom. And the fact that you are there and you're always engaging and you actually do respond to comments. You know, you said you read all the comments I and do. I know as a and, and, you know, don't don't tell YouTube this, but I did end up creating a second channel. I linked it in the Google form. <laughs> um, I have I have four thousand subs, so I, I beat the four K one K rule, but nice. I'm exclusively with AdSense. So okay. <laughs> that's just you know my preference. Um, but I know as a, a creator myself that definitely being at the forefront of the audience is a very important thing. And I do think that one of the pulls of freedom, especially when I joined, is I thought it was very interesting that the person in charge and the one making all the decisions was also the one creating the content and being there. And while yeah. it be at a green screen, a headset and a Google Doc, it's still, you know, you don't see the CEO of Machinima or, you know, BDTV or anything like that. You know, you, you see George. And I, I think that that was also a big pull. And I think that that is awesome. And um, thank you. I have to be honest when you I, I think I said this at the start of the call, but when you initially put out that uh, Google form to fill out, I honestly thought that it was could not ne like not just with me. I didn't think you were going to actually end up calling anybody. Uh, but then when I got a message today, I was like, all right. You know, so I, I think the fact that you are willing to hear from, you know, people and stuff like that. And granted, I'm not a freedom partner, but I, I was and I do, you know, I feel like I have some you know, valid points to bring up and things like that. So I definitely think that the level of transparency, also something that I thought was great was the earnings reports is that you actually mm. did disclose those. I thought that was really awesome, too, because you don't see any other MCNs doing that. Yeah. And we still have um, them at freedom.tm slash earn. Same link from day one is, is there till today. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that like the fact that you're always, you know, there in the center is, is also a very, a very cool thing. And I think you should definitely keep doing that because it, you know, reminds people that it's not, a, it's not really, while it is a company, it, it's a person too. Yeah. So. I mean, it validates what I always believed, which is we are a public facing YouTube company. It's hypocritical for me as the head of that company, not to be making videos and I never understood why other CEOs of other MCNs don't feel the same way. Like, it's you don't eat your own steak. Like, how can you be claiming you help YouTubers grow when you don't make videos yourself? Even the CEO of YouTube actually started her own YouTube channel. She didn't upload too many videos, but still, she put in the effort, and that I respect. Yeah, I think I think the big ex major excuse is like time and stuff like that. But at the same time, to your credit, it's like you're going to exactly the same amount of meetings as all these other executives and you edit the videos yourself, whereas Susan definitely had somebody else to because there's no right. way she could have done any. Um, so I think the fact that you are able to find, you know, half an hour or an hour, you know, to, to make a video, it, I, it's kudos. It's, it's, it's kudos. Um, Thank you. And I think it's a lot of people that underappreciate it. Um, Okay, so now that was like all of like the uh, like the questions um, that I had regarding freedom, and I want to thank you for for being honest and like actually like to be honest, you didn't dodge any of the questions. You answered them straight on. So like a person, not a politician, you answered my questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not um, a so good I really, politician. <laughs> <laughs> so I really do appreciate that, and they were great answers too. Um, answers that I didn't think you were going to give, and that did explain a lot. Um, on to something a little bit more fun. Um, because I know that it is, I checked, I was like, what time is it right now in the Philip, not in the Philippines, in, in Dubai. Yes. What time is it in Dubai? And it is, it's crazy. You got up this early. Um, uh, I usually start my day uh, early because 
I just need to, yeah. Just need to get up. That's that's nuts. Um, all right, so onto something a little bit more light. Um, so I was, so I was told to ask this question first. Do you know what Freedom Island is? So I saw that was the comment you made in the Google form, and I have no idea. Okay, this is gonna be great. So Freedom Island. Okay, so we have to backtrack a little bit. So back back in like 2012, I joined Freedom. I was making videos, stuff like that. Channel got terminated. You, you stole you stole my seven dollars from me, which I, I forgive you for now. Um, and what happened is, is that you know, fast forward a couple of years, the first video on my new channel uh, was a video. It was a Freedom Exposed video, your, your typical video where you know I call out a whole bunch of things. Right. Um, and what happened is, is that <clears throat> fast forward a, a year. I meet a, a fan who is now my most dedicated fan, and his name is Quintus Minimus, and, and he found me through a Mario Kart Wii live stream, and he wasn't your average viewer. I mean, this guy was invested. And uh, I ended up talking to him, and, you know, on my channel, there are a bunch of, you know, memes and, and inside jokes. And one of the things that he got so hung up on was the whole freedom thing, and, and he just he just loved it. And so he went on basically a full-blown investigation of freedom, and I'm talking, like, every knickknack there is like the fr no taxes in dubai and right. what he did is he made a f okay are you familiar with the youtuber jack and jellify i don't know that one okay half a million subs he makes uh, object shows um and basically okay. it's a it's an animated series and so quintus being a fan of his work decided to make a spin-off show called freedom island now okay. it's on his channel and it gets thousands of views per video and the people at freedom actually watch it frosted fix is a huge fan i don't think he wanted me to tell you but um he does watch it actively and basically the whole premise of the show is is that you are the leader of um this group of <laughs> this show and what happens is that contestants compete for the grand prize of a million dollars and so the first season is ended. We're on the second season now. But the, basically the premise of the first season is, is that the contestants were me and then a bunch of people on my channel and, and you were the host. And at the end, what happened is, is that um, you ended up scamming us all of the million dollar prize. <laughs> Because as an homage to the fact, the whole that you took the money, you know, uh, into Dubai, it's like George ran all the way with all your money. <laughs> um, so it was, it was a joke there. Um, well, I'd love but, to see this. How can I find? Yeah, no, it? I want to, I want to show it to you because it's absolutely hilarious, and we've actually all been trying to. So on Frosted Fricks's um, review show, he's actually reviewed it, and uh, <laughs> he tries not to laugh because he's like. Because the way Quintus and I see this is that you're going to either find this extremely funny or extremely offensive. But after talking to you, I feel like that you'll get the humor within it. So I'm going to show you the latest episode. And uh, this is it. And it's uh, titled, This is Dubai, Freedom Island Deluxe 7. So, the, okay. um, so it's up to 7,000 views. And you can actually see the pinned comment is from Frosted Fricks. Because he used to be the host of the show, but then you actually ended up taking over. Um, the entire episode's 21 minutes long. I was sent some timestamps to skip to parts that you're going to particularly find amusing. Um, we, if you start at 523... Okay, so again, just to, so just so you understand, a lot of jokes are inside jokes, but a lot of this episode revolves around you and memes that you'll understand. Uh, but the entire premise of the show is, is that we're all competing for a prize and uh, there's a leader. So if you want to scrub to 523... That's when the uh, fun stuff parts, and uh, you can just uh, listen, and uh, I will. So yeah, and you could start it. Are you Dubai, at five twenty-three? Yeah. Here in Dubai, we'll start Dubai, it now. In Dubai, in Dubai, in Dubai. Outside the Dubai, here in Dubai, in Dubai. Dubai. meetings in Dubai. Dubai. Here in Dubai, 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 sequence thank you for yeah. sharing i actually captured it as well for the video i'll play that on the george show oh can you still hear me yeah okay. yeah i thought you were continuing to watch it no 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 i oh should i continue watch it oh yeah no no it gets it gets better we get okay. to a really good scene where he visits your house so let yeah. me Dubai. let so me continue watching bullet off of the ground yeah. i got this Oh, 
Hey guys, you guys want to buy a book? <laughs> I wrote it myself. <laughs> Who animated this? The title on the back and not the front. He did, he did. He's really good. He did this I all in PowerPoint. All it's books. crazy. Well, you see. Amazing. <laughs> I know. Right, Let's keep watching. It gets it gets so much better. Go He's gonna visit your house. Right here. Wait a minute. Where did my money go? I looked everywhere for my cash line, but I couldn't find it. But then I came across this stack of mysterious green paper that someone just left out in the open. Oh wow, that's a lot of green paper. And I used that green paper to make a bunch of math books so I could sell everyone my math knowledge to make math. This part's boring, it gets better, trust me. <laughs> hey, where'd you guys go? Okay, the city is massive, and George could be anywhere. Where do we look first? What was that for? He's in the Freedom Tower, you ignorant. <laughs> the Freedom you Tower. Videos. <laughs> so where is the Freedom Tower? It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, cool. Guys, I think this is the place. Uh, is stupid girl scout. <laughs> George's so, crib. What are you doing here in George's apartment? <laughs> well, the circle is Japanese for George. It is? I don't know. Could you just tell us where George's actual apartment is? No, no, get off my lawn, you crazy kids. <laughs> and then it's your wife again! <laughs> this is very good. Alright guys, this is definitely the place. I wouldn't go in there if I were yeah, you. Yeah, there's my wife and kids. Who are you guys? <laughs> I'm Xiao Yu Venus, George's <laughs> wife. And these are my four daughters. Avienda, Evie, Kira, and Daenerys. <laughs> I'm daddy's favorite. Now I am, now I am. Yeah. All right. Wait, so is George in there? Yeah, but I wouldn't go in there if I were you. He's recording a new video, and he does not like to be interrupted. <laughs> well, we've traveled all the way around the world just to see you, George. So we're coming in whether you like it or not. Huh? Pretty cool. We paid you $4.5 million, Freedom Family, <laughs> with that eye to partner with Freedom. So hey, that George. I was to start paying to exit. You are not allowed to let people in while I'm recording my videos for the George Show. Yay! <laughs> I promise I'll start paying my taxes. Here, take my daughters. They're nice people. Just please don't do anything to me. No, George, we're not here for your taxes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Carry on then. We want to know how you bailed yourself out of jail. Oh, well, since I am the CEO and the founder of the Free. No! Free. See, that's Quintus. He commented. You replied to his comment. I have a lot of money in my pocket. Loved it. But isn't that money for the creators who are partnered with Freedom? Well, you see, we are the Freedom family, and families share things. So, uh, sure, the money's for them, but we all get to share the money if need be. No, George, that's called communism. I've been summoned. So if you took the money, wouldn't the Freedom Partners know that they haven't been getting paid? I'm sure notice that I haven't been getting paid. Well, of course. They bring it up all the time. Now, some of you have this conspiracy theory. Hey, conspiracy George theory. went to Dubai <laughs> about yeah. the same time that they haven't paid us on time. Maybe he took all the money and left. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. So I used the Freedom Family Income to bail myself out of prison. And then I took the remaining money and ran away to Dubai, where I have been ever since. Okay, that's great, but George, we need you back on Freedom Island. Freedom Island? I thought that ended. Well, we're on season two now. Who in their right mind would ever greenlight a season two? That doesn't matter. What matters is that there's a lot of dead people. We need you to revive them with your one-up technology. Eh, I don't really feel like it. Then why not? Why would I ever want to go back to that crummy island when I have everything here in Dubai? Plus, Dubai All right, you can stop is a watching. Um, but I just wanted to show you a snippet of it um, yeah. because it's just like this huge thing like it's this huge meme right now and um uh, i just want to let you know that you have an entire show about you um and uh like i said frosted fix is a huge fan and, the, and a bunch of other people are um so i i have to because i have to ask because i got it to relate to quintus so what did you think of the show so far it's amazing that one person spent all that effort to create those animations all that footage he collected of Dubai, of our kids, and he had a lot of 
voices, like people trying to sound like us. Uh, that's all very impressive. Um, I guess the parts I felt were a little excessive is all that stuff <laughs> about scams. Like, the problem is a lot of people still believe that. And I guess if we make fun of it, it might also tell people, look, this is not at all what's happening. But having a little more of the truth into the episode would be better, like kids that get their PayPal wrong and we don't pay them and they think we are keeping the money when in fact they just didn't give us correct payment information. Or YouTube terminates their channel, we try to get it back, they think we're not doing enough, so they say we terminated their channel. It's because of freedom that they lost all their work. Like those are the kinds of misunderstandings that I thought would also be good to bring out in humor, maybe, uh, in the show. But that was my only negative, is I think it may make it a little too serious by commenting on all that scammy conspiracy theory stuff. Um, I would have liked to see a little more of that, why people think that way and what the misunderstandings are. Um, but I think the best thing would be for me to talk to this guy, Quintus, give him my feedback directly, yes. <laughs> and basically shake his hand and say, well done, overall, that's an amazing production I never even knew about. I mean, I was honestly shocked. I mean, I we thought that Frosted may have sent it to you and that you didn't respond to it, but now knowing that you never actually knew about it, no, but yeah, I mean, personally, like, I'm amazed. Like, he made that entire thing in PowerPoint 2016. Every animation, all, it's insane, it's insane. Not even Adobe Animate, or flat. Everything's in PowerPoint. And the fact that he uh, made it, and I mean, he's like a branch off of, like, my channel in the sense that, like, because it's all, like, memes and jokes, like, within, like, my community. So, like, I mean, from my perspective, to have a fan like that, as dedicated as he is to make an entire show, it's 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 insane. I mean, insane. I can't think of another. It, it it is absolutely insane, and I just uh, while he wanted to share that with you, I wanted to share that with you because it is, um, you know, it, it's very funny and it's like jokes that like only like you know like people who don't understand freedom like a tax free environment in <laughs> Dubai. Yeah. It's like, and the fact that it's able to be you know relate to even more people, I just thought was really great. But I'll certainly let you know he actually did fill out the Google form. Because as soon as you put the video out, I just started spamming him on Discord. I'm like, you gotta, you gotta get in contact with George Quinn. You gotta call him. Um, and so what happened, and he actually lives in California, so you'll have a better chance calling him. Um, but he said he only had a Discord. So I said, just put your Discord at tag and it doesn't matter. I, I, he's got, he's got to get in contact with you, hopefully. Um, so okay. if I, if I send you his Discord, you could probably add him and, um, speak to him directly, but I just wanted to share that with you because uh, on top of it being, you know, a production, I also think it's, you know, a, a cool thing that, you know, little does George know that there's an entire spin-off show of his entire uh, YouTube network. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's impressive. I'm surprised though his channel has so few subscribers. I see only 608. Is that like a backup channel or is that his primary channel? No, that's the thing. So it's it's actually crazy because, well, <laughs> so he actually started his channel just making compilations of stuff that I was doing. And then he made Freedom Island as a joke, okay. but then it actually started to pick up steam. And so he kept doing it. And uh, what we've actually found, because like I went into his, like, his analytics and I was like, we got to figure out about this because he's getting thousands and thousands of views, right? Uh, but only like 12, 12 subs a day, which I mean is good, but it's like you would think that he would have more subs. Oh, so right. what we nice found is that with island. a lot of these Don't object so shows, what happens really. is that, um, really. especially with uh, BDFI, which is like the main the one, if this is a spinoff, um, is, is that the view counts are significantly higher than the sub count. Right. And what we found is, is that what the videos that he's being recommended against are videos that would appear on the YouTube Kids app. And despite jokes oh, in the video being snake inappropriate eyes. to an algorithm seeing the Twin Towers for half a second, they can't pick up on that. He doesn't curse in any of his videos. Oh, All of his jokes like are subtle. That so they probably matter. sneak their way in. And if you look at the interaction, it doesn't reflect the view count of 6,000 views. He only gets like 100 if that likes. So right. that's what we think is going on. Um, he's not a YouTube partner, and if he was, he would be making way more money than I am. Wow. Um, but 
And he even told me that he doesn't even want to become a YouTube partner. He just does it for fun. And he's only 15, too. So he's he's young. And um, wow. this is something that he just I mean, I, I think it's insane. I, I think he needs to give himself a lot more props than he does. But I mean, that's Quintus. He's he's humble and he just does it for fun. That's that's just who he is. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, 15 years old at that age, I was not animating. <laughs> <laughs> So he's ahead of the curve in terms of professional skill development. Yeah, so I mean, he told me that everything that he learned himself was strictly just off of experience. And I had to get Sony Vegas for him to, because he's doing all of this in Windows Movie Maker too. And I was just like, really? why? What? Yes, it's insane! <laughs> so he was doing all of this in Windows Movie Maker to start out with. Um, I just told him, I said, what is your Discord tag? George wants to talk to you. <laughs> he says you're lying. Um, so I'll send that nine. Six, six, well, if he filled out the Google form, I can find him in there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no problem. That's awesome that he did. And yeah, just okay. for reference. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, uh, Freedom Island, you know, so just got, got out, out of the way. Um, but coming back to just uh, Freedom in general, um, my initial impression of you before this call was is that you were looking for uh, the lowest common denominator. Right. Uh, I mean, to just have as much money as possible and that you would start all of these spin-off projects just for attention grabs. But after speaking to you, I, I have to say, I mean, I, I feel like that the passion is still there. The genuineness is still there. And it's just the struggle of the YouTube ecosystem with the changes going on. Yes. And I mean, personally, in my opinion, I think all of this advertiser outrage is all manufactured. I don't think that they care. I really don't think that they actually are like, oh, my Coke ad ran against, you know, <laughs> oh, a video that was racist. Like, they don't care because what they do is they just use it as a negotiating pound. They're like, if you're going to put our ads against racist videos, then we want a better deal with right. ads. And, and now Google has to be like, oh, now we got to cave to this and we got to make these systems up. And, um, you know, they... Uh, another thing that I think YouTube did, a, the Creator Insider channel, I, yes. I think that that's awesome. That's a great step in the right direction for right. YouTube. Um, but one of the things that they said is is that people were bringing up, oh, was the uh, demonetization all because of the Logan Paul controversy? Mm. Um, and I, uh, they said no. Uh, they said they were always going to introduce a quality filter. But how do you differentiate? There's a difference between quality and then stuff that's okay for everyone. So, I mean, if you're just re-uploading content or just doing meme compilations, like, yeah, that shouldn't be monetized. But if you have somebody like iDobbs, who's controversial, he does things that are out of the ordinary, but he makes original content, why not him for it? So, I mean, well, I think that it's just constant. I agree. There's lots of issues with YouTube's current policies, and I think they're still figuring them out. I think they will adapt them and find, you know, exceptions for content that shouldn't be demonetized. But it, I don't know how long it'll take. Yeah, it's it's ongoing. <laughs> How often do you actually meet with like YouTube? Like Twice you have a, a call with your uh, sorry every two weeks, Twice a month. Every two weeks. Yeah. Okay. And I, another question I have is is that I know for a fact you guys can get in trouble for uh, monetizing copyrighted content, but yes. I know in your review process that you talk about how you can get in trouble as also for monetizing content that gets demonetized. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. The penalties are for channel termination, YPP suspension, or channel demonetization. If a single video gets demonetized, no problem. If you get a single strike, no problem. But it's if the channel in its entirety gets terminated, suspended, or demonetized, then we get a hit against our reputation as an MCN with YouTube. Is that something that you can simply fix in one of those two-week phone calls and just be like, give me a break and take no. this restriction off, or it doesn't um, work? You know how strikes work. Uh, they take a certain yeah. length of time for that to expire. Same thing. It's the same length of time that it takes for our reputation hits to expire. Okay. Okay, because I knew, yeah. Okay, I was just curious, because I just thought it was like more of like a quality filter. I didn't think it was an actual, like, that YouTube was really cracking down on it. But I imagine that now, especially with the constraints on monetizable channels, that the whole MC... Because I'm just trying to think of, like, back then, MCNs added, like, they had a much larger pool to yes. pick from. 
And I'm trying to understand that now when there are so many channels that are not monetized and those who are mon, because again, with the whole minimum payout thing, like back then there was no way I was gonna hit the $100 minimum right. threshold to be paid by, there was just no way that was gonna happen. So I'll just like, you know, freedom, take 40%, whatever. But now, you know, it's like, you know, if I'm pulling in, I pull on average like $25 a month, you know, from ads and stuff like that. So it's like, I hit it in four months, you know, that's fine. Um, so would you say that as an MCN, you have to, and not just for freedom, but like as a whole, that you have to like sell yourself more to convince people to give up that portion of their revenue than you did it back in the day? Yeah, and that's why we are focusing on new services like custom games, like custom music, and even crypto. These are things that all create new revenue streams outside of YouTube, but you use your YouTube channel to promote them. So, you know, music. We have Rainimator, who is a very popular Minecraft animation channel. He's got six million views on one of his videos that we provided the soundtrack for. Our team composed the custom music that he put into his video, and it's now at six million plus views. Those are the kinds of services we want more people to become aware of so we can help them. We can give them better music to grow faster. Um, game development is another good example where we have now a team led by Dave Frakia, who's ex-Activision. He used to be the studio head of Radical, which was part of Activision in Vancouver. So he's now working with us full time, and he has a team that's creating custom games for creators and mobile browser games, simple games. I'm not talking a Call of Duty or a World of Warcraft, but yeah. <laughs> um, things that we feel a creator's always wanted to build, but never found a game quite like what his vision is, so we build it for him for free. He promotes it, and we split the game revenue uh, of any money that comes from that effort. So that's again something we've never offered in the past, and that's just something we started this year. Dave joined us in April, just six months ago, so it's a very new service. And the crypto part, it's not you don't use your YouTube channel to promote, but if you have a good graphics card, you just run the crypto miner while you're oh, sleeping. Oh, I, I and, used to run the crypto miner. And you make money. I used money. to run it myself. Yeah, so <laughs> that's the connection uh, for YouTubers who are gamers and, and the crypto. But that's what we're trying to do now. We're trying to find new ways to invest in products and services that help you grow, leveraging what you've built on YouTube or the hardware you have. Yeah, I have to say that um, I, I, the crypto miner, I thought, was a very interesting idea. Uh, because I was just so out of left field and I honestly thought it was great. Okay. And I actually did use, I used it for the better part of like five months. Okay. Um, until I just like, it was just too much on my computer, but I did use it for the better part of five months. Okay. Um, recently too. So, um, and I did make, you know, it was like $5 a month, but like, it was still cool to see that like mined crypto was like, oh wow, that's actually going into my PayPal account. That's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. So nice. I think that that being a revenue stream that because like I think one of the problems with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general nowadays is is that how do you it's use not it? easily accessible yeah yeah how do you use it it's not easily accessible. I mean, you've got to go to like a brokerage packs full of Coinbase and all of that requires ID and stuff like that but I mean hey when you pitch it perfectly you run this program in your computer and money magically finds way to your PayPal account and um, it works and I was like wow that's that's pretty cool so I thought that that was a very, very good idea, and uh, it's something that you know I, I was one of the beta testers too. I filled up the good nice. report. Nice, <laughs> awesome. Um, but uh, no, so I thought that that was pretty cool as well. Um, so I, I, I like the crypto miner. Uh, a more broad question is: is that so for you personally? Because I know back then in, in the in the day. Uh, Oh, actually, before I ask that question, so one thing that I've always laughed about and has always been an inside joke as well is the fact that in a video a long time ago, uh, so Freedom was DDoSed and hit offline, yes. and y you are quoted as saying, DDoS attack, DDoS attacks are healthy, and I have to ask, why did you say that? Well, do you if, remember that first? Yeah, I do. If we cannot. Okay protect ourselves from misfits out there who are trying to take down our websites, then what are we doing? I mean, it's the same with YouTube, right? I make videos because I feel it's hypocritical for a video company not to make videos, especially the guy at the top. So same thing, if we have a great tech team, surely they must be able to defend our websites against some misfits who think that they can take us down. 
And it's a challenge. It says, are we good enough to protect ourselves from these misfits, these hackers? And that's why I said that, because I wanted them to try to take us down, and I wanted our team to figure out how to stop them. <laughs> I mean, I just thought it was very like weird how you were kind of egging on the DDoSers, but yeah. then you were like, oh, well, they were using an IP address and they weren't spot. And then the fact, I thought this was great, is just that you showed the console of them blocking yes. the IPs. Yes. I thought that that was, that was, that was great. Um, <laughs> I'm amazed you okay, remember so such details. Dude, I'm, I'm telling you, I've been watching. I, I'm not part of the network anymore, but I still watch the videos because it's just entertaining to see it. We paid you $2.2 .2 million for your family. I'm going to click this pay now button. <laughs> Boom. Do you need a catch up payment? It's on a, it's like, click uh, that I could, eye. I could yeah. click that eye. <laughs> you know what? Maybe you should host the George show next time. Just host the George you? show. Yeah. You know, take, take it off. I'll just you, be the new channel. You can be the new George. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'd love to, but I'm currently very busy. So like I've yes. actually filled up my entire fall. So I rep soccer, competitive and recreational. I know they call it football in other parts of the world, but soccer in the United States. Yeah. And then um, I also work part time at a, at a very large retail. I'm not going to disclose it, but uh, I do computer sales. So I okay. make my, you know, I fill up my time and then I do YouTube when I have room. Right. So, you know, this is kind of like my outlet, the creativity of it. And then Twitch as well. That's nice. Well, you're very eloquent. Um, you're very well spoken. And this is the, f I didn't <laughs> expect to be interviewed uh, by someone who I call. So I think that's awesome. No, I mean, this is this is great. Um, I guess my final question before I let you go is, is that what is the so I know back then, I mean, I thought you were stretching real far with the whole going public and an IPO yes. and being on the stock thing. So what is your end goal for me to freedom? When can you sit in the chair and be like, you know what? I've accomplished everything and this is great. And now we're number one. What's what's the end goal for freedom? And the end goal is for us to actually make an MMO. I mentioned, you know, we're not making Call of Duty or World of Warcrafts, but I would like to make a better World of Warcraft that's focused more on becoming an expert in the real world instead of just a fantasy world. Like I played these MMOs when I was younger a lot, and I became an expert in their fantasy world. Did I gain any real world skills? No. Nothing that I could say help me become a better CEO or help me learn about better tax reduction strategies. That all I learned in real life. <laughs> but I'd love to make a game that's fun and addictive and entertaining like a World of Warcraft is, but that actually teaches you about tax reduction strategies in Dubai, that teaches you about how to become better at building a business by playing the game and putting elements that build those skills into the game mechanics. That's my ultimate goal. You know, to make a World of Warcraft, you probably need $100 million. How do you get $100 million? Well, if we go IPO and Run have a the crypto miner. <laughs> that's one possible way, a more likely way, <laughs> is to build freedom up into a publicly traded company that can then fund this new, very ambitious uh, project, which would probably take like five years to build. So. To your point of, you know, how far along are we towards this goal that you said was really, you know, aggressive and almost unbelievable back then. We are a lot closer than we were then. We're now set up as a Cayman Islands holding company that controls the Hong Kong company as well as our Singapore company for crypto and our game development company. So that's the structure we now have where the Caymans is the IPO vehicle and we're consolidating revenues into that single balance sheet to make the numbers look bigger. So it increases all of that uh, IPO goal, makes it happen in less time. And we're still very far away. There's no like, oh, we're gonna IPO next year. It's maybe in five years still, but who knows? So I still want that to happen. I'm still trying to scale the business so that it can happen. And I hope to find good people to join us along our IPO journey because it's all about the team. That's what will make it happen. And uh, we have a lot of growing to do first. Well, George, I have to say, it, this has been the best Monday night in a while <laughs> that I've had. Um, or for you, Tuesday morning, I guess. Yes. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Uh, I greatly appreciate you taking the time, uh, especially an hour, um, to uh, talk with me. Um, this this has been uh, something that I won't forget. 
Um, I really appreciate the transparency and, and honesty and willing to, you know, answer some questions that I, I know I've had for a long time and, um, you know, willing to watch other freedom violence, stuff like that. Um, I, I think it's I think it's really cool. You're a super down to earth person. Thanks. Um, keep, keep up the great work. And um, I, I wish you the best with freedom and, and, and it grows. And um, I hope that you've taken what I've said uh, to heart and some of the criticisms and, um, you know, yeah, I, just just thank, thank you for taking the time, George. I really do appreciate it. One of these days, when we are ready to make a bigger game, we will be asking YouTubers to uh, lend their persona to characters to be in the game. Is this something you might be interested <laughs> in to make a version oh, of you yeah. in a game that we oh. make? Oh, I would love to voice act. People always tell me that I could be like somebody on radio. So if I can kickstart my voice acting career over at uh, a Freedom Game, um, I'd be more than happy to, George. My okay. uh, Skype, although I don't use it, I do still get notifications, so when you message me, it will pop up on my phone. Um, I also have your and, email, uh, so I'll contact you when you're ready. Any... Either, both ways, yeah. No problem. Um, but like I said, it's been an absolute pleasure, George. Um, thank you so much, and uh, you have a great rest of your day, and I will have a great night. <laughs> awesome. I will send you a link to the video when it's published. No problem, George. Have a good one. Take care. <laughs> take care. Bye. Hope you enjoyed this office hour number two. Click that eye to see all the office hours so far in case you missed any, including the video introducing the concept. I really like the response so far, so I will keep doing these as long as you keep feeding me great topics to talk about. Abstrabone, you were awesome. I look forward to the next time one of you decides to interview me on my own office hour. Normally I'm the one asking the questions, but I'm happy to do it the other way around. Hey girls. Quiet on the set. What do you guys think of all this? Is it an interesting content that you enjoy watching? Tell me down there in the comments below. Or is it boring and you want to see something else? Tell me what else you want to see in the comments below. I have something else to preview, which is a game that we are launching the level designer for tomorrow. And that will air about this time. I've been using the YouTube premieres feature to get everybody watching at the same time. I hope you like it. I like it. I love chatting with you guys while the video is playing. So we will keep doing YouTube premieres unless you tell me you hate it. In the meantime, Freedom Family, who am I? I am still sick, Papa George, blowing my nose almost every 10 minutes. My wife keeps saying how annoying that is. I am. George Sunpai, Papa George, and many other names you, the beautiful Freedom Family, has given me. I am the CEO and founder of Freedom for Freedom and the Freedom Family. And all the amazing people I'm meeting for the first time during my office hours. Looking forward to meeting more of you. I'm George, and you've been watching. Hey girls, quiet on the set. <laughs> Click that eye to partner with Freedom and join the Freedom family so we can all grow together. You get many perks like position music, you also get epidemic sound, a lot of other access to royalty free videos, sponsorships, and many things to help you grow. Just click the links down there in the description below to get involved in our community, our forums, our discord chat servers, meet our graphics team, meet our community team, all of that on discord and the forums. What are you waiting for? Get started. And we will grow together as a family because this is the Freedom Family. You are part of it, we are all part of it, and we're all growing together. To get more George, click that big F. That will subscribe you to Freedom Central, home of The George Show. And PewDiePie gave one of you, Freedom Family, a big shout out. Click that video to see the shout out and to see our new 3D sets for you. And click that video to see what YouTube recommends you watch next.